This is the fourth video in the FOA series on instructor training and certification. This video focuses on the roles and responsibilities of instructors in teaching courses in fiber optics and cabling at FOA approved schools. But as we've said earlier, the comments can be considered general comments on the role of a teacher in almost any kind of technical course. The first thing is, who qualifies as an FOA instructor? All FOA certified instructors must be sponsored by an FOA approved school for whom they will be teaching. Instructors are expected to be knowledgeable about what they teach, which is measured by passing the exams for all the certifications for the courses they teach, beginning with the first level certifications, the CFOT and CPCT. They must have the skills and knowledge to teach classroom sessions and hands-on labs. If you refer to the KSAs for instructors, you'll know that what we expect in the classroom is the transfer of knowledge, and what we expect in hands-on labs is the development of basic skills. While we prefer that instructors have some field experience in fiber optics, a good instructor can generally learn what he needs to learn about the technology and develop the basic skills needed for teaching a lab fairly straightforwardly and certainly with the help of organizations like the FOA and lots of others like manufacturers who are generally happy to help you learn how to use the products that they sell. Generally instructors, like everybody else, need some training. That training as an instructor will lead to having technical knowledge about the topics which they will be teaching. That training can come from attending a course themselves or doing self-study and that's one of the reasons that we encourage our instructors to go to, for example, the FOA FiberU programs, take the programs themselves, and see what we think instructors and students need to know. Furthermore, by going to FiberU and seeing what we have on that website, you can better understand how you can use that in programs with blended learning combining online learning and classroom learning. We also expect an instructor to have skills, and we're not just talking about hands-on skills in fiber optics for the labs. We're talking about skills in organizing classes, communicating with students, which is a two-way thing. You not only need to get information passed to your students, but you need to get feedback from your students on what they are learning and how to better present the material. You need skills in doing presentations. You need to know how to use various resources, PowerPoint presentations, videos, demonstrations in the classroom to better transfer knowledge to your students. Instructors need to understand their duties as instructors because their duties include more than just teaching the course. They're expected to keep up to date with fiber optic technology and products, which can be done by reading industry literature. Almost everything is, of course, online these days. And, and the FOA has tried to filter a lot of this and put it into our both online and email newsletters. So if you read those and keep up to date with the technology, you'll know pretty much what's going on in the industry. We also expect you to keep up to date with FOA procedures. Most of our procedures don't change year to year, but some do. And we change and update all of our curriculum materials once a year. So at the end of every year, you need to download a new set of curriculum materials, look at them, understand the changes, and incorporate those in your curriculum if you're using the FOA curriculum materials. If not, it's still a worthwhile exercise 
because you'll see what we now have added to all of the presentations that we think is important. It's your duty to take the certification exams for the courses you teach. That solves two problems. One, it assures you that you know what's in the certification exam. And those are things that you should include in your course. And of course, it tells us that you have reached a level of competency in the same material. We also expect you to introduce the students to the FOA. We want them to know what the FOA is and how the FOA membership and certification will help them in the job market. The instructors are expected, as we say, to introduce the students to the FOA as part of the certification course so they understand why FOA certification is important to them. We expect you to teach the course following FOA curriculum guidelines. That's the KSAs we keep talking about. The knowledge, skills, and abilities we expect from every student who's certified through your course. The instructor teaching the class must sign the student application, never office staff, because part of what the instructor is doing is judging the abilities of the students in both knowledge, which we test otherwise in the exam, and in the hands-on skills that they should show in the labs that are part of the course. The instructor should complete the FOA paperwork and submit it to the FOA promptly. For that, you can use administrative people at your school to help you do this promptly. We get a lot of phone calls from people who want to know where their FOA ID card is three, four, five, six weeks after they take the course. And if the paperwork is not submitted to the FOA promptly, we cannot send them their ID card. The student is not certified until the paperwork is done at the FOA and they are sent their card. That's part four of our instructor training, and now you're ready for part five.